On InCycle this week, all eyes on France with Lotto Sudal's Tony Galopin looking for July success. Sixth time I will do the tour this year. So uh, I lost a lot of time and I just won one time. So I know it's hard, but yeah, we'll do the best. We have a good team. There's no school like the old school. We talk retro jerseys with Prendas Ciclismo. You see uh, a jersey you really liked, and but you know it was unavailable, and it was almost a quest to, to, to acquire something which you really, really liked. But first, Gregory Rast and his role as road captain. If there's an unsung hero of the professional cycling team, it's the road captain. The glue that holds the team together and the link between the team car and the riders on the road. To learn what it takes to do the job, we spoke to one of the best in the business, Trek Segafredo's Gregory Rast. I'm Gregory Rast, a rider for Trek Segafredo, and I'm one of the road captain in this team. I'm a professional rider since 15 years. His experience uh, counts a lot, um, he feels the race, he knows what's going on. Also, he's an unbelievable good guy of the bike, a uh, funny guy. It's also important that, that you have some guys who take the rest, uh, making them laughing, because it's already so, so serious being on the bike, you have to be so concentrated all day when somebody is a bit down, also he talks to them and uh, it's, it's, it's important, he's like our right hand. The road captain's responsible for executing the team's carefully laid plans, whether it be organising a sprint lead-out, protecting a GC contender or reining in a breakaway, sometimes having to juggle all three tactical approaches in one race. It is not a PlayStation game. We need to control the race. We need to, to build a situation in the race which is good for us. Is this a good group? Is this a bad group? We let it go or not? And then uh, how much time we give the group? And you can say, OK, let's close it immediately or not. But it's uh, things like this and look that uh, everybody is doing his job. A road captain is actually the guy who can take also decision in place and the, the, the director. So when you need a road captain who speaks on the radio, uh, who takes decisions and uh, who tells, by example, me exactly, of immediately when, by example, four or five riders go up the road, who's there, which teams are there, so then we are immediately, okay, they can go or we should react, and yeah, it's, it's a very important role. He's like um, a super helper, a super domestic. Um, Whatever you ask him, he, he, he tried to do it. He gives always the best of himself, not the 98% or not the 99%, but the full 100% in support of the team and especially his leader. With years of experience, road captains also have a pastoral role. Having learnt from their time in the peloton, it's an unwritten part of the role to pass on advice to lesser experienced teammates. I know the junior, I mean, this comes in the professional cycling. I mean, I see now uh, when you, it's quite some young riders here and you see them making a lot of mistakes. When I was young, I did uh, a classic des Alpes and I was the first guy to attack. So uh, it was a big mistake because it's a climber race. And uh, so this, uh, my teammates told me afterwards and also some other riders told me, yeah, <laughs> you should maybe not do this. This is things I think uh, you learn from it. If someone tell you this, and I mean, I had, uh, I, in the past, uh, there was some, some big riders, but also some really good directors who, who, who teach me. In line with the variety of racing experience throughout the season, the road captain's role changes with each race, with different tactics employed for one day and stage races. Of course, uh, the tactic is based on what the leader's ambitions are, but it's also important that, that uh, the, the road captain is in charge of that. In the classics, each guy knows his job. In a stage race, it's, it's different. You, you try to be in a breakaway, you need to organize this. Let's jump, let's not jump, uh, let's close the gap to a breakaway. And then it's maybe not always clear who is doing what. And as cycling has evolved, so has the role of the road captain, with communication becoming a lot easier thanks to race radios. The role of the road captains were even more important than now. It, it, makes, it makes the role of us and also the role of the road captain a lot easier. I mean, we have the communication uh, like we have now. We have so many obstacles on the road and uh, you can never go in the peloton to see your rides. It's too dangerous. Uh, you have speed bumps, you have roundabouts, uh, narrowings and it's, uh, yeah, it's, 
it's very good that we can use it. I'm from the, um, the cycling family, so uh, my father raised the Tour de France, uh, so my uncle. Uh, when I was young, the, um, my uncle was already sport director with the FDG, so I remember already to come, come with him when he was sport director to, to be close to the riders. When I was young, uh, if, uh, every year I remember something special about the Tour. For Tony Gallopin, the Tour de France is in his DNA. As a Frenchman, he also knows the meaning of the race to his country. I mean, uh, first Tour de France is the biggest race for, for us in cycling, so it's, uh, it's really important that the Frenchman, I cannot uh, imagine to race the, the season without Tour de France, so I know it's one of the big focus uh, in the year. And uh, yeah, it's always special when you race in uh, your country, on your, in front of your family support and on your road. So this is always uh, a special moment of the year. And in 2014, Galopin delivered, getting the right break to take yellow and write his place in the Grand Boucle's history books. You have different parts of the day. I mean, first you have to go in a break. This is really hard. Then you're in a breakaway with, I don't know, maybe 20 guys. And then the sport director tell you, OK, you are the best in GC. So this is already good. Then you are all day you are asking about the, um, the, the, the gap with the peloton. And then, yeah, and then at the end, you, you, you know that when you, you finish or are close to the finish line, you're like, okay, still five minutes, six minutes, okay, I can do it. But even when, when you pass the line, and then, okay, two kilometers before the sport director tell you in, uh, in your radio that you will be the leader jersey, yeah, you cannot believe that you wait after the finish line, you're like, are you sure it's, yeah, it's possible? No? And then when the peloton come, and then you are all the guy, Hey, you are the jersey, yeah, this is crazy. It's crazy, you have the yellow, but it's going so fast. You, you receive the call from, from the president. You, have your, you spend some time with your family, with your teammate. With the tour full of passionate fans lining the road, a French rider in yellow sees the excitement levels rise through the roof. After I had the yellow in the stage victory, I saw, I saw some pictures that was not normal. I saw some people with my name. On the, on the body, the, I saw also my name on one car, was painted on the car. And yeah, it was, it was, uh, you see, you, when you are in the race, you, you can feel like, okay, come on, your, your name, and really enjoy that. But uh, you, you cannot uh, feel this, all these people because you are on your bike and it's so hard. But then you see some pictures, some video, and then this, this oh, it wasn't normal. Unable to hold on to the Maillot Jaune, Stage 11 saw Galopin continue to ride the wave of support to a stage win in Oyonna, finishing off a roller coaster few days. You know, you start the, the day, you say, OK, now I have, I have two amazing days, so we'll see now what's, what can happen. Then you have no pressure, you, you are relaxed. The feeling at the, at the, the finish line is, is big difference because um, when you take the jersey, you, all day you think about that, that OK, now uh, and the best in GC, you have to pull your, you know, and then the last 20k, you are more and more sure you will have the jersey. But then the, yeah, the, the this stage I won, I was going so okay. I have good legs, I attack. And then you say I can go, 10k to go. I have 20 seconds. Okay, maybe I can do it. Then you go again, and then you have the peloton is coming, 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 and then wow. Then you have the victory. Then this feeling is uh, more stronger at the moment. Is is stronger in this four day? You have. Emotion like full, bad, relaxed, full again, and well, it was, it's not it's hard to, to explain. Back again for the tour, Galopin knows exactly what's ahead of him and is taking it just one week at a time. Sixth time I will do the tour this year. So uh, I lost a lot of time and I just won one time. So I know it's hard, but yeah, we do the best. We have a good team. When also Andre Greppel can win a stage, I'm also happy like uh, I win, so it's really nice. For the moment, I just checked the first week. I know the second week and third week, you are you, you cannot make a plan uh, at the start of the tour. You, are, you don't have to crash. You need good legs. To, you need to be healthy. You so much, so much things. So um, now I'm more relaxed, and I and I see day by day. There's a strong French selection of riders, but the question most fans are asking is if the 29-year wait for a home winner of the tour will come to an end. I think 
two, two years ago there was podium and then that was something really new because when I was, <laughs> I was uh, young there was I think when we have one French in top 10, top 15 there was something special so now we have really guys for victory and I think in, in France we need, we need that for, for cycling. I think cycling is on a good way even in France but yeah we need, if we can have um, guys who can win the GCs I think then it's really, it will be, it will be great. I think yeah, Quintana this year will be the, I think the, the big favorite. But um, maybe my um, French uh, nationality, I hope for Thibaut Pino or maybe Romain Bardet. I think it will be nice if we can have a um, French uh, victory. So. People identify with a team more often than not because of the look of the jersey. People didn't support the team because they like the look of the bike. Grew up being a, a mod, you know, clothing was really, really important. Um, and then early days of cycle clothing, you'd, you'd see uh, a jersey you really liked, and but you know it was unavailable, and it was almost a quest to, to, to acquire something which you really, really liked. Welcome to the world of Andy Story and Mick Tarrant and their little warehouse of Jersey Heaven. Since 1996, Tarrant has been hunting down and selling some of the most iconic designs in the sport. And with the help of Story, Prendas Ciclismo soon moved online and into reproductions. With a huge personal collection and a new book to show for it, who better to cast their eyes over some of cycling's best and worst jerseys? I was working with a guy, um, Luigi Deliani, and he had a bicycle shop on the shores of uh, Lake Garda. And so I would go to his shop and have a route around, wow, where did you get this? Wow, where did you get that? You know, And I found some of these wool jerseys. And I, you know, because they were so accurate, I just, I just wondered why they were in such great condition. You know, they should have been moth-eaten. And uh, he explained to me that uh, Rai, the, the Italian television pro uh, channel, I'd made a film called Il Grande Fausto, a movie about Coppi's life, and they contracted Santini to um, make some replica jerseys. Back in the day, they were 100% wool. It's, you know, to us, it's still amazing. And uh, riding around in something like this, and when it got wet, soggy, with that amount of stuff in the back pockets, you know, it would be trailing on the back wheel. was a Dutch team but they were they were a super team you know they they hoovered up the best riders and won just about everything uh, the jersey the jersey just it never changed it was consistently red yellow incredibly long <laughs> they used to cut them that's a size two which equates to a small now um, but they're lo like a tube really so um, marginal gains were really, really minimal with jerseys such as this. You could replace Brooklyn Chewing Gum with anything you like here, and, and most cycling fans would recognise the jersey. We had a, a big box of Santini wool jerseys turn up one day. Uh, the Brooklyn was one of the first that we fished out, and it was one of the first that we decided to reproduce. Uh, we love the look of it. The great thing is that back in the day, when they're making them in wool, <laughs> labour intensive is just, it's off the scale because each individual panel is stitched together on each individual stripe. The Brooklyn Bridge is embroidered. Phenomenal. It just must have cost so much to produce. So this is the one we love. Well, basically, uh, they, they, were the, they were really the team sky of their time. And basically, you had the two best riders, uh, Greg LeMond and Bernardino, who went on to sort of tear the team in two, really. <laughs> yeah. The actual jersey itself, I mean, obviously, it's uh, based on the Mondrian, 
uh, artwork. When Santini made this jersey, they were actually sublimating polyester, um, which as you can imagine was probably not such a bad idea given the complexity of the jersey. Uh, but at the time, Bernardino wasn't quite ready to accept polyester as a jersey fabric. Uh, so Santini actually made Bernardino some wool uh, Lavi Claire <laughs> jerseys. And if you actually turn them inside out, uh, all, the, all the panels are stitched together here. Um, so I'd imagine the, the production staff probably weren't best pleased to have to make something for you know, but he was the boss, so. For some reason, they went from the Mondrian pattern to to this one. The Toshiba was a was a regular jersey in in the bargain bin, uh, but uh, you know, I, like, looking back on it now, I don't know. I don't I don't think it's so, so bad, but at the time, nobody liked it. This was um, this was very very popular at the time. This kind of a kind of it's like a loop back yeah, fabric, loop isn't back it? Fabric. It was yeah. supposed to aid wicking. All it. <laughs> if you ask people what were their top five least favourite jersey designs, most people would have uh, the Le Groupement uh, jersey in the list. It's, um, I don't know what it is about it. I think there's a, <laughs> part of the problem was is the team collapsed, you know, you know, and leaving loads of riders without jobs. Um, but it, yeah, it's, it's pretty awful, really. When Mappe finished, uh, Santini had a huge inventory. We bought everything. Um, a, lot of the th a lot of the stuff we bought had the rider names on the back. And the, muse the museos, etc., went almost immediately. But then there were other ones with like Cancellara, Isol, Nobody wanted those, did they? <laughs> this was the last year the team was in existence, 2002. Uh, they were a Santini team only for that year. It was the first year that ever completely cubed it. I suppose for you to use that element mm. of the cubes uh, to a lesser extent, you know. I don't know, it has its fans, but super team. The running of a World Tour cycling team is a grand task. Teams change over the years, and so do sponsors and their names, but this aside, they're steeped in history, representing nations for decades. Richard Pluger's team Lotto NL Jumbo runs proudly at the heart of the Dutch cycling scene and has done since 1984. With each year comes progress in the team ethos and development on the world stage. I think we have a different mindset now. The Rabobank team where we came from was a very big team. Now we're not so big, but it was a team that always went for the GC also, just because they had to. We now aim for stage successes. That's what we try to win. Of course, we also go for the GC, but we really have to rethink our strategies. So a lot has changed, especially in our mindset. Although having a nation support behind a team is of great benefit, the weight of expectation can also create added pressure. The, the yes, we do try to make an impact on the world tour. So there's always pressure because you want, I mean, I have to perform. We're ninth in the ranking right now, I believe. And you want to end up as high as possible on that list. You want to win races at the highest level. So that brings pressure, no matter if you're a Dutch team or not. We do have to keep our Dutch heritage alive. And for us, as a Dutch team, it's important to do this with Dutch people involved. So there is pressure, as we'd like to keep our core alive and still perform at the highest level. Yeah, and up at the level. For any outfit to sustain success, a long-term strategy is of the utmost importance. In the past, this has relied on development teams, but in recent years has included a broader search outside of this recruitment strategy. 
Ja, overal vandaan. Hè. De... Everywhere we in Holland have development teams. And the Rabobank development team is still here for its final year. So we get some young talent from there. We also picked up Primus Roglic from Slovenia. Our scouts work everywhere. Alexi Vermeulen comes from BMC. Uh, Our scouting department looks for talent with any riders and also goes to junior races to keep contact with younger riders. We stay in contact with them, possibly to sign them in the future. And we work together with the younger Renner from Austerhout. We try to help them out a bit to give young talent from that development team the opportunity to make a step forward. And it's also possible that we will start our own development team in the very near future. After Plugger's squad lost its title sponsor in 2014, cycling's economic fragility was again apparent. But now with lottery backing, there's a chance to build. It was tough the last couple of years because you want to continue the company and a cycling team is a company. We have about 80 employees and it's difficult to keep the business running. So that is sometimes hard. Sometimes you have good days, sometimes you have bad days. But for now, we're only having good times. And actually it's been pretty good ever since 2012. We're still here today. Even better, we play a good part in international cycling. So it works. So it is demanding, but then you look at the Giro where Steven Kreisweik raced his hardest race to date, physically but also mentally. So I take a look at those guys and think, this is such a fantastic sport. And I do everything for the sport to keep us going. And that will cost me some nights of lost sleep and some energy. But if it works out in the end, it's all worth it. That's it for this week. Join us next time. But until then, keep up to date with us on social media.